All right, when it comes to your retirement plan, please know this one thing. <laughs> Jeez. Ah, please know how it is con that's, uh, how they came up with the numbers. And you got to know the inputs. And this is the one critical part. I was dealing with a guy uh, yesterday. I think he was running for Vanguard, uh, running a plan through Vanguard. And they said on the upside, you'll have $33 million at your death. On the low side, you have $6 million at your death. And, and he was, and rightly said, I was pretty satisfied with that. So the first thing I said is, what inputs are they using? And uh, he said, I'm not sure. And uh, that's fine. That's, that's, you know, he doesn't need to know. Uh, I mean, he should, but he doesn't need to because no one ever says what their inputs. But you, need, you do need to know this. So I told him, I said, well, you got to find out because if they're using inputs are based on historical rates of return, that's problematic in my estimation. And he doesn't know, I don't know, because I didn't see the plan. So that's up to him to find out. But what I want to show you here is, it's not just historical rates of return versus future projections. When it comes to running for retirement plans, there is this thing called the Monte Carlo analysis. And the Monte Carlo analysis simply says, that's how we got the safe withdrawal rate, essentially. Basically saying, what is it, if I were to take out a certain amount of money, what's the likelihood of my retirement being successful, i.e. that I have money left in my portfolio at my demise. All right, that's uh, what's called the Monte Carlo. And what a Monte Carlo is doing is they're just using simple inputs. This is our average expected rate of return, and this is the volatility around the average expected rate of return, all right? So what happened in the old days, we used to have these linear rates of return. You know, we gave, we'd say, this is what Dave Ramsey uses, it's crazy. A 10% rate of return on average each and every year. So it would be like this. We're, we're going to get 10% rate of return on average, and we're going to get uh, each and every year 10%, 10%, 10%. And so that would mean you could take 6% out and never run out of money. You could take 6% out because you're getting 10% on average, and you never run out of money because you'd be adding 4% to capital. Now, people get really upset with me when I said you know, Dave Ramsey had a video on that. He did. Just I watched the video, man. And, he should, and I'm just like, this. that's just not good. It's not good. That's silly. No one no one uses linear rates of return anymore. Because if you did, we'd all be getting, you know, there'd be no 4% rule at all. The reason the 4% rule came in is because while the average is 10% a year, that's the average. The problem is, is that the markets go like this. They go up and down. So here you might have got 20%. Here you got negative 10 here you might have got 13 percent, but here you got negative eight or something like that you see how that works but it's, it's the trajectory is to the northeast but it's still up and down up and down and it's a whole lot different pulling uh seven percent of a portfolio that's down than pulling seven percent of a portfolio that's up and so if you have to catch it on a bad cycle 2000 2001 and 2002 you're doomed so what happened is that's where the Bill Bengen 4% rule came in because he looked uh, historically from, uh, he did it in 1994. So I think he looked from 1926 to 1985 or 1990, I can't remember. He said, historically, you could have taken 4% a year out of your portfolio and never ran out of money, All right, historically. And uh, those were basically uh, what we've all kind of consolidated with a 4% rule. And then we've kind of further along that, we've, we run a Monte Carlo analysis, which uses standard deviations and average rates of return. And that is the input that determines your percentage of success, is we're saying we're going to use an average rate of return of X, and we're going to use a standard deviation of Y, and Z is going to show you the percentage of success, i.e., will you have a good chance of running out of money or not. So let's, let me show you, this is from the Kitsis blog, Kitsis uh, from 2017. I, I just, this is so critical. You've got to know this stuff. You've got to know how their inputs are made. I'm telling you right now. So this is uh, a normal distribution of market returns, a good old fashioned bell curve, nothing fancy, nothing fancy here. All right. So the average, the mean and the average is equal. The average in this case is 5%. So we're saying, Josh, you're going to get 5% on average as your rate of return. All right, so what I do is I, this is what you got to know. 5% is the average, and we're going to have a standard deviation of 10. 10. So we have to know what the standard deviation is and what the average rate of returns are. You've 
got to know that. Average rates return five, standard deviation is 10. So what this means here, that means within 68% of the time, we'll just say two thirds of the time. So we have 100 different retirement scenarios, 68% of the time, your portfolio on any given year, I should say, your portfolio will return 10 points off the average within one, because that's one standard deviation. 68% of the time, your portfolio will return 10 points off the average. So if the average is five, 68% of the time, we'd expect you to either get a plus 15, because five plus 10 is 15, or a negative five, because five minus 10 is negative five. Five or 10 minus five is negative five. Yeah, five, 10 minus five is negative five. So remember, one standard deviation. We have five as the average, and we go 10 on either side. So 68% of the time, you'll get between negative 5 and plus 15. 95% of the time, two standard deviations, so it's 20 on each side. You'll get positive 25 or negative 15. 28% of the 100 times we run the scenario, 95, I mean, 95 times of the 100 times we run the scenario, or 1,000 times or whatever, your average, your portfolio will give you either 25% on the uh, up or 15% of the down any place within there. Does that make sense? So you could get 95% of the time. You could get negative uh, 15 or positive 25 or anything in between. 95% of the time. Three standard deviations is about 99% of the time. So 99% of the time, you'll get between negative 25 and positive 35. So that's, I'm you, that is critically important because we're saying on any given year, you might be up 35%, you might be down 35%. And if you don't know those inputs, then how are you going to factor out if your portfolio is successful or not? Because I can make everyone Bill Gates with software. I can say, look, our average rates of return are 12%, but we're only really having a one standard deviation. And that means you'll never run out of money. If you're only pulling 5% a year out, you're adding 7% a year to capital, which is stupid. No one does that. But you got to figure out those two numbers. Now, if we have an average rate of return, so let's let's do this now. So I hope that makes sense. So again, your mean is the average, and your standard deviation is how much around the average it is, is the, or how much off the average. Our average is five. Our standard deviation is ten. One standard deviation, we're going to be ten off the average on either side. So ten minus five, or, or five minus ten is negative uh, five. 5 plus 10 is positive 15. So let's flip these numbers around to see if you guys. So right now we got average rates of return is 5, standard deviation is 10. Let's do, we're going to flip them around. Say average rate of return is 10, standard deviation is 5. We're just going to flip these around here real quick. All right. So let's go back to here. All right. So what we do is we say, uh, let me change this around just a tad, make it a little bit easier. So we're going to say average rates of return. Five, as a uh, uh, rates of return 10 and then standard deviation is five all right so the first thing we do is we draw our bell curve and we say and we draw something down the middle that says what is our average rates of return we're going to 10 does that make sense all right so in this case we have a five as a standard deviation and we say okay 66 percent of the time we're going to have 5 or 15 will be the variability of the returns. 5 on the, on because it will be 5 off the average. So 10 minus 5 is 5. 10 plus 5 is 15. That's 68% of the time. 95% of the time is going to be 20. It'll be 25 and 0. And zero. Not negative zero, just zero, because we are. So 20, 95% of the time, we're going to be, uh, screw that up, the standard deviation is five. 95% of the time, we're going to be 20 on the upside, because our average is 10. Five is a standard deviation. Two standard deviations is five plus five. 95% of the time, we'll make 20% on our money, or we won't make anything our money. We'll break even. 
because five is the standard deviation. So uh, five, 10 minus five minus five is zero. All right, so question is, 99% of the time, what will it be? And I'll let you guys answer that. 99% of the time, what's it gonna be for our Monte Carlo analysis um, in terms of using three standard deviations? 99% of the time, our portfolio will give us what on the positive and what on the negative. I'll let you put that on the down on the comments if you would. And if you don't want to put the comments, because just see if you figure that out. Just say yay or nay if you want to, or whatever, however you want to put it, because it's important. So 99% of the time is what we're looking for, for three standard deviations to figure out, are you going to have a 68% probability of success or 98% probability of success? If it's 98% probability of success, that just means twice out of 100, you had no money when you died. No liquid assets when you died. That's it. No big deal. All right. Now, if it's 66% success rate, that means 34% of the time you had no liquid assets when you died. Yeah, it's a little, bit, a little bit concerning. The reason this is important is because I am using, I don't have it here, but the, the Vanguard numbers and the Vanguard numbers aren't great, man. I think it's a 6% on average is a stocks. All right. And then they have a 18% standard deviation. So 6% is our average with an 18 standard deviation. And so for simplicity, you don't even need to do the bell curve. All you got to do is say 68% of the time we, we are going to be, uh, let's see. So I take my trusty calculator. I say six minus 18, cause that's a standard deviation. So six minus 18 is negative 12 to positive 24. All right. 95% of the time it's going to be negative 30. Uh, 24 plus 18 to 42 and 99% of the time it's going to be negative uh, 48 to was that positive 60 Is that right yeah 60 all right so when you have a six as a standard deviation and you have a, a six as an average rate of return and an 18 as a standard deviation you're literally just taking six Adding 18, which is 24, adding 18, which is 42, right? 24 plus 18 is 42. Yep, and then adding 18, which is 60. 99% of the time, you should get a 60, not 60, 60, excuse me, 60 on the up. So 99% of the time on any given year, you should get 60 on the up or a negative 48 on the down. And again, they're just taking six as the average, subtracting by 18. So one standard deviation is negative 12. Two standard deviations is negative 12 uh, minus 18, which is negative 30. And three standard deviations is negative 48. So you can get a pretty good gauge there that your portfolio is gonna be, I mean, that's, that's pretty spot on, man. That is pretty spot on. Negative 48 to positive 60. That's, I bet if you look historically, you'll see that almost to a T actually. So then the question comes in, okay, well, then if I got negative 60, what's the light? So here's how Monte Carlo kind of works negatively. It says, look, all these things are independent of the other in terms of if you got negative 60, in theory, you could get another negative 60. And not likely to happen, but in theory, you could. I mean, it's literally never happened, but that's the, that's the nice thing about Monte Carlo is that it's very, um, well, going back to this guy's article right here. Uh, let's get out of this. Hold on a second. Going back to this guy's article right here, um, if we look at the headline, does Monte Carlo analysis actually overstate tail risk projections? And the tail risk would be, you're not going to get negative 60, negative 60. Most likely. I mean, I can't pr predict, I can't prove the future, but it's never happened before. And Monte Carlo assumes that something like that could happen. All right. I mean, it could. That's the issue. So, if, but Monte Carlo, a lot of people say, I only have a 68% probability of success. Well, yeah, because if you got negative 60% by negative 60% in two consecutive years, you're doomed. That's not likely to happen, though. But anyway, you got to understand the inputs, man. I'm telling you, the one thing for your financial plan is you got to understand this. I hope this helps. I'd love to hear your questions. love to hear your comments. See if you couldn't figure out that answer that I asked you because it's, it's important. Anytime you're running a scenario, you got to ask the inputs. What is your standard deviation and what is your average rates of return? First and foremost, that's what you got to know. Well, you also need to know their inflation, 
uh, the cost of uh, a just living going up for Social Security, Medicare, but for investments, those two things are you gotta gotta understand. All right, love to hear your comments. We'll see you.